we are in a sense designed through natural selection um, to become obese in an environment that we can now characterize as obesogenic. So there is food everywhere. It is relatively cheap, especially high calorie food is relatively cheap. Um, it is, does, we don't have to expend calories to get calories. And that's very, very different from the environment to which we're adapted. Um, so you have to go back a little ways and imagine um, the env environment that we are best adapted to. And that's an environment where primarily we're living as hunters and gatherers and energy has to be expended to acquire energy. Um, so energy, especially relative to today, uh, is scarce and um, we are highly motivated. We have to be designed to be highly motivated to get energy. So the purpose of getting energy from a natural selection point of view is that it's going to be converted into offspring. So more energy is basically uh, in the environment that we're best adapted to is good. So there was, the idea is that there was never a time where being adapted psychologically and physiologically to resisting calories would have been good. That would have never been under selection. We can understand how people become obese in the first place, especially if they um, become obese when they're little kids, then it's incredibly, it's even more difficult than because our bodies sort of become conditioned to a certain weight. But no matter when we gain weight or how fast we gain weight, um, people tend to gain weight as they get older. Um, losing weight is always difficult. So there are, now we can get into the proximate mechanisms about why losing weight is so hard. So people do succeed in losing weight, but like you asked, um, what seems to be most challenging is keeping that weight off. So if you consider what we're adapted to, it makes sense that we should have mechanisms that are engaged when our bodies sense that um, we are losing weight because this would have been a signal in say hunter-gatherer times, this would have been a signal of energy scarcity, of an energy crisis. So how should we have responded um, in order to uh, keep our energy levels up and uh, maximize our reproductive success. So that's the you know goal from an evolutionary point of view. And so a signal that there was an energy crisis is a signal to the body to hold on to whatever energy is currently available. Do not lose any more energy. So even if you're already obese, even losing a little bit of weight triggers a whole bunch of mechanisms um, psychological and physiological that uh, tell the individual in various ways that they are generally not aware of um, to hold on to energy. So what ends up happening is hard for thin people to imagine. And I've never been obese, so I don't know what it's right. like either, but I've <laughs> read a lot about it and I've talked to a lot of people who are suffering because um, of a health condition or they're just unhappy with their bodies and they're finding it difficult to lose weight. So from everything that I have read and everything that I understand, the mechanisms that kick in are incredibly intense. So um, there's a part of your brain called the arcuate nucleus and this is a part of the hypothalamus that plays a fundamental role in regulating our appetite. So you know what it feels like to be hungry, right? When you're really hungry, not that we even get really hungry in this environment, but if you allow yourself, you know, if you skip a meal, this is an intense craving. So think about what that feels like. It's so intense, you can't think about anything else. You just want your food. You're gonna get food and you're gonna be um, pretty nasty until you get it. You're highly, highly motivated. And this is an adaptation that's kicking in. This is the product of natural selection. This is a psychological mechanism. So all kinds of things are happening in your endocrine system and your nervous system that are telling you, you must get food now. Okay, that is a overwhelming signal that is impossible to ignore. Okay, 
So for the obese person who loses a little bit of weight, those signals are far more intense. Um, so people will say, well, what do you need to eat for? You already have an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. That seems not to be relevant. This is a hunger signal like thin people probably don't understand. So, and this signal is activated more intensely for the same amount of food at a particular meal that you might eat or an obese person might eat. For the obese person, you might have that amount of food and not feel hungry. The obese person has that amount of food and still feels an intense, intense hunger because they have been losing weight. So their leptin levels are dropping and leptin is a key satiety signal. So it's a, it's a hormone produced by fat cells that is fundamental in appetite regulation. And um, when people lose weight, leptin levels drop uh, in accordance normally in healthy people with the amount of weight that they lose. But in obese people, when they lose a little bit of weight, um, leptin levels drop precipitously so much that they signal the, the dropping leptin levels um, allow the body to activate an intense sort of hunger response. So your experience with food and an obese parent, uh, person's experience with food and hunger is gonna be very different. So you can't kind of project your experience onto what it's like for an obese person because their experience is very, very different. There are two ways in which we regulate how much energy we have. So those main ways are through how much energy we're taking in so calories in and calories out, how much energy we're expending. And when uh, we're losing weight, we have these signals um, that are activated to maintain weight, to hold on to whatever calories we have and to get more calories. So the ways to do that are to increase intake, so hunger is amped up, and to decrease expenditure. So the drive to exercise and the ability to exercise and the number of calories burned from a given exercise are all um, reduced. And those are also very intense signals that are hard to resist. So again, I think it's easy for a thin person who has never experienced those signals to um, just assume that this is all totally under the obese person's control and, you know, the thin person knows what it's like to resist going to McDonald's, but it's not the same. The signals are much more intense. Um, and I think we have to pay very close attention to how it feels to us when we are starving or when we absolutely cannot exercise anymore. Um, so there's all kinds of subtle signals that are influencing behavior, as I just described, but also physiology in terms of shifts to um, basal metabolic rate, which also happen when leptin plummets which is what happens when people lose uh, weight, especially if they lose weight quickly. Leptin drops very quickly. Um, that can affect uh, thyroid function. That can affect our metabolic rate. So um, obese people who are losing weight have to exercise more than a thin person to burn the same number of calories, basically. Unfortunately, I do think that solving the problem has to start with little kids. And I say unfortunately because I think what I'm saying is the problem is, seems so recalcitrant um, in the adult population. It's, it's a medical management, you know, an expensive medical management of a condition. Um, so with a lot of education, with an improvement of what kinds of foods are served in schools, for one thing, that's a huge factor. Um, somehow making healthy food more affordable, um, ceasing of uh, government subsidizing of foods that are incredibly high calorie and have no nutritional value and are known to promote diabetes. Um, so I think there's very complicated solutions and I don't <laughs> know how to answer your question, but it's some, it will take a long time to educate people about the complicated causes that contribute to obesity. And unfortunately right now there's just a huge stigma. People don't understand what causes obesity. They still think that it's laziness.